Welcome to Moving Math and Science. In this video, let's talk about measuring it with a tape measure. I like to consider myself a handyman. I live in an older house and there's always plenty of projects and many of these require accurate measuring with a tape measure. However, when I would use a tape measure, I would look like this. I finally took the time, learned the tick marks and where they came from, a couple patterns that improved my accuracy and actually made it enjoyable using a tape measure. So here's what I learned. I took the measurements from one to two and I blew them up so it's a little bit easier to read. So let's go through this. The tape measure is, this one is measured in one sixteenth, so it's divided into 16 dots or ticks. So if you were to look at them, this would be one sixteenth, two sixteenth, three sixteenth, four sixteenth, five sixteenth, et cetera, et cetera, all the way up to sixteen sixteenths. And you could measure just with sixteenths. So if it came to this tick mark right here, you could count the tick marks and that would be six sixteenths. Or if it came to this tick mark, it would be ten sixteenths. But one that takes a while, it's slow, and it's not as accurate because you may miscount or something. So what they did was they developed some ticks or marks to make it much easier. And it's based on fractions. So let's take a look at these. Okay, so let's look at this. You have 8 sixteenths. That can be reduced. 8 goes into 16 two times to 1 half. Then you can use 1 fourths. 4 sixteenths is reduced to 1 fourth. And 12 sixteenths is reduced to 3 fourths. And then 1 eighth, same thing. 2 sixteenths can be reduced to 1 eighth. 3 sixteenths to 3 eighths. 10 sixteenths to 5 eighths. And 14 sixteenths to 7 eighths. And then what they did was they took all these fractions and they created lines or ticks. And here's what these look like. Then in order to make reading the tape measure even more quickly or quicker, they each tick mark is a different size. The largest is one half. The next largest are one fourth, then one eighth, and then one sixteenth. So, and it's the same on both sides. Here's one half, here is one fourth, here is one eighth. Okay, so now what you can do, you know that if uh, you're measuring something and it comes to right here, it's the largest tick mark, so you automatically know it's one half. But that can still be a little confusing. So each of these measurements make little patterns to make it even easier if you learn the patterns. So here's how this goes. Okay, so here's some patterns that may help you. Now, my wife, who teaches math, and she's actually much better at measuring than I am, she can glance at it and just go, well, this is three-fourths or whatever. But I needed something that uh, would speed up my process because I was really slow. So here's the patterns that uh, I found out or discovered. Okay, one half, there's only one of these. So one half, you just know you have one. With one fourth, you have one fourth and three fourths. So the pattern is just one and three. And also, why is this line in between? Because that's where your one half is. So all you need to remember is that one fourth tick, you only have one before one half and three after one half. And now with eight, it goes one, three, five, seven. So you have one, three, five eighths, seven eight. That's easy to memorize. One, three, five, seven. And then with sixteenths, you have one, three, five, seven, nine, eleven, thirteen, fifteen. So you have one, three, five, seven, nine, eleven, 13, 15. Again, that's not that much to memorize. So now let's put this to practice. Say you measure something and it comes to right here. Well, remember the tick marks. One half is the largest, one fourth is next, one eighth, and then the sixteenth. It's one fourth. I know it's before the one half, so it's got to be one fourth. So this would be one and one fourth. How about if we get a measurement um, right here, okay? Now, I know it is the third largest or 
second smallest. Okay, so it is in a one eighth. I know the pattern is one, three, five, seven. So I know this would be one and three eighths. How about this one? How about sixteenths? There's a lot of these. Okay, again, I know it's the sixteenths because it's the smallest. And it goes 1, 3, 5, 7. And then I know after the 1 half, it goes 9, 11, 13, 15. So here is 9. And I know that that's 11. So that is 1 and 11 sixteenths. And finally, let's go with one more. How about right here? Again, 1 half, 1 fourth, 1 eighth. It's the next to smallest. I know the pattern for... 1 eighth is 1, 3, 5, 7. So what right here is the 1 half. So I go 5, 7. So that is 1 and 7 eighths. So again, the patterns go like this. 1 half, you only have 1. 1 fourth, you have 1, 3. 1 eighth, 1, 3, 5, 7. And 1 sixteenth, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, 15. I hope these patterns and learning the tick marks will help you become more accurate when you're measuring. If you'd like to know more about measuring, this playlist will help. Thanks for watching, and MooMooMath uploads a new math or science video every day. Please subscribe and share.